I'm just going to show you guys how to make an audio splicer uh, that is triggered by your fingertips on the keys of your keyboard. I'm going to make it so that the computer keyboard uh, numbers 1 through 4 cut up this loop that I give you guys. If you download the uh, thing in the description, it'll come be a zip file with the loop too, so you can follow along with the loop because um, it's kind of what this is designed for. Um, and it'll cut up the loop and it'll quantize it so that uh, you'll just see, you'll see. I'll be using the global transport and stuff and you guys don't have to look at me anymore. Alright, here we go. So to start, we need the keys. We need to know what keys are being pressed. So if you make a key object as well as a num box, then as you see, when you press the keys, the keys show up. So we need keys 1, th uh, 2, 3, and 4, which is 49, 50, 51, 52. These are the ASCII values. So now to clean up our code in advance a little bit, I'm going to do an S ASCII. Uh, connect that. And now let's make the first one for our number one. So S ASCII, I mean R ASCII. Uh, we're going to do a cell, so it's going to be looking for this number. Um, and when it receives that number, it'll output a bang. So as you can see, pressing keys, no, oh, oh, you press one, and then there it is, cell 49. So, um, that is the basis of so many really cool keyboard tricks. Sorry, I got my notes here because this is still figuring out myself more or less, but, okay, so now what we want to do next, uh, just trust me in advance here, we're going to make an S trigger object, well not object, but send object, call it trigger, then we're gonna make a float and we're gonna attach this cell to it, and then we're going to make another one last send called play, and we're gonna attach that here. And Now what we want to do, we want to duplicate this um, so that we have one for sales of 50 and then sell the 51, sell the 52, and um, yeah, so that's our keys basically. Um, I'd hook up a bang, but whatever. So these work. <laughs> yeah. Now, what is next? Now we need our audio file. So let's start with a buffer. And let's just call this sample. Uh, we're going to need, we could do a read or a replace. Replace just makes sure that it overwrites whatever's in there. So, we'll be reading, uh, yeah, Gulliver Loop is the thing that comes with the file. Um, but what we want, though, also, is we want the length of it. So we need an info tilde object, and then we need to name that info tilde whatever we name the buffer that we want. So this sends out a bang right when it's done reading the file. So that is going to bang the info to tell us how long the total milliseconds is out of this outlet. So if you do, um, well, you just sample like this. So that is how long this um, is. Now, this uh, audio file is. It's about 10 seconds, 10.8 seconds. Um, now we need to play the sound. So we do play, we do a sample, and we need the start message. Ooh. And if you have the dollar sign one, that basically means dollar sign one is a very uh, simple concept that I had trouble understanding when I started off for the first like three months. I don't know how I didn't just pick up on it. Um, what it is is whatever variable I believe it's any variable is being sent in there, just takes the place of dollar sign one, and then comes out as that. So you can see all these different start uh, amounts is what's going to be sent to here. But now, instead of a number box, we're going to use another message box. We're going to take the R play, which is the number at the bottom right here. So that's R play, basically. Um, and make it so that, oh, well, here. Uh, first, let's get a stop, just so that we don't have to keep hearing the same thing over. Let's get a gain tilde. And then let's get an easy deck so we can hook up all these things.
Max should have transformer sounds as you an option for when you're plugging in patches. That'd be awesome. Um, okay, that'd be terrible. So, in theory, if we get our what am I doing wrong here? Oh, it's not being triggered. Oh, because I don't have the trigger hooked up. So if I do an R trigger, and then we make it so that a bang is telling this number to shoot through here, then it'll... So you can see I'm pressing different keys, but it all is coming out the same. Now if I... So this number decides the milliseconds, how long into it, um, it's going to start. So now, what is next? The next step is dividing up this sound file into four um, equal parts, because this is an eight measure long loop, uh, and I just so happen to know that, because I cut the audio file, so it works in this case, so it won't in all of them. Uh, what we need to do is we need to take this... This is the important, whoop, not that. This is the important stuff. We need to take this millisecond duration and we need to divide it into four. Take it there. And now what we want to do is we want to first tell the first um, uh, number one to just equals zero because we want the first key to start the audio file at zero which is the very beginning then we need a times one but you don't need a time one times one because this is already times one so you just plug that in there take a times two plug the times two in there and then we got the times three and then this times three goes straight into snow and now, when you load it, more transformer sounds. Uh, so this audio file has been divided up into yeah, four different parts. So that's pretty cool. But the thing is, is that there's no limit. It doesn't register it to a tempo or anything. So it's so you can very easily get off beat if you want to play to backing tracks or something. Um, so now, what we're going to do is we're going to hook it up to our handy dandy transport. This transport, if you just type transport and then double click it, it opens the global transport, which you could also find in the extras up here. Global transport is an awesome thing. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. No, it, um, it acts as a metronome for the entire max patch. So, um, we could change the tempo right there. I'll just... Do it this way so that you can change it later too if you need to. Not that you will for this tutorial. Um, so now we're going to change the tempo. The tempo of this loop is 88.5, or real, that's somewhere close to that. So that works. Uh, that's what we need to do first. And now, what is next? Oh, the metro object. So the metro object, you know how metro normally is like outputs milliseconds so it'll do a bang every 2.5 seconds well good news if you enter 2 and n or let's do 4 n uh, I don't know what the n necessarily stands for but it stands for notes or more or less so 4 n means a quarter note so now if we get a toggle and we hook up this toggle to a bang and you turn it on Oh no, nothing's happening. Uh, this got me lost for forever. You have to make sure that you activate the transport. So now you can see. Oh, well, let's rewind it first, actually. Okay. Now you can see that it's uh, banging with synchronicity to the transport. Uh huh. Synchronicity. And that's cool. That is basically what we're going to do. Uh, first to get some extra variance, I'm going to make four of these. I'm going to move this son of a bee. No, I don't need that float. Where'd you even come from? 
Ew. Um. Well. And then, so we got a half note, quarter note, eighth note, sixteenth note. And we're going to connect these into the right inlet of the metro object, which is going to replace that 4n. So, once more time, or one more time, let's rewind this and start. So it's on 4-4. Four, four. If we change it to 8n, uh, it's, I mean, it's not forward. A quarter note, 16th, or 8th note, 16th note, anyways. You get the point. Now, if we hook this up to here, uh, you can see an example. So it's already cutting it up to beat. But see, that's the thing, is that it won't stop. I, I, I'm not pressing anything. It's just, it won't stop. So what we want to make it do, the last thing we want to do is we want to make it so that it only does that if we're hitting it multiple times. Otherwise, we want to make it so that it only plays once, um, no matter what metro um, note value the metro is going at. So what we need to do, we need to take the trigger. We need to make it send, or make it bang this message of one. And then we need to make a gate object. Gate with one outlet and with zero as the default. Now, how does this work exactly? This gate is going to be hooked up. Um, this right inlet is going to be the metro object. So when it gets a one, this gate is going to open, allowing this metro object through. So the first beat is going to go through. It's going to tell this to launch. And then we're going to take this start object. <coughs> Excuse me, well, I need some wine. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take this start object, and we're going to send that to this bang, converting it to a bang. And we're going to make a zero. Uh, this is getting kind of messy. Okay, so it's a zero. And then we're going to send this zero back to the uh, inlet of the gate. So what this is basically doing is when this is on um, and you hit the trigger, or, or so you hit the one, then this gate opens. The first bang of this metro comes through, tells it to start, but at the same time sends this zero back to the gate, closing the gate. So only one gets through for every trigger that you send. Um, so now, in theory... Okay, so yeah, that's basically it. So, uh, example is... Yeah, so there you have it. Um, I think that's just about it. I don't even know how long this has been recording, but ta-da! Um, subscribe. I don't know. I'll have fun. Goodbye.